Hello, and welcome to the Economic and Community Development Meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from May 21st meeting. Are there any additional issues? Thank you. Giving uh, Councilwoman Ortiz time. Or do you have yeah. any? Do you have I do any? not. I'm okay. going to approve. I do not. I'm just going to complain about parking. That's I know it's hot too. Jeez. Okay, so I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, approved. The minutes are approved. Okay, so this is the grant, the 2019 grant application appeal consideration meeting. And we're here today to hear any appeals on the scoring. Um, We've all, we've all had this information. We've had the chance to go through it. We're not really here to hear about your agency and why we need to fund you because you're all worth it. But this is the process for the scoring because that's what you turned in. Um, this is a competitive process, and that's why we have a panel score it. May be a conflict of interest if we scored it and then awarded the money. We have a panel that scores it, uh, the applications, and anybody that gets 89 or above are then awarded the grant after its approval by the council. Um, I've been in nonprofits and I've written grants and I've I've um, administered them. I monitored them, and I'll tell you, I've never seen seen anybody get a grant do over. I mean, grants, once they're submitted, they're submitted. I mean, it wouldn't be fair if we said, okay, half of you can submit two grants, and then maybe you'll get it right, when, and maybe we'll take three of them. We can't do that. It's a one grant turned in, and that's going to have to be it, and you're just going to have to learn a lesson if you miss something, and do it on your next grant. Um, okay, any agency that, representative that would like to speak will have three minutes and able to do so. After that, staff will um, provide any information they may have that we need to know, and then we will vote or discuss and vote. Okay. So at this time, staff has updates on two agencies, um, KCSL and East Topeka Council on Aging. If you'd like to update yes. us on those. So after reviewing the appeal letters and doing a um, little legwork on figuring out what happened there, we did realize that the um, under the review process that not every agency was going back in at the beginning of the quarter to set their projection. It was pulling over from the applicant, but they had an opportunity to change that at the beginning of the year. Some did on paper uh, with the contract, but did not put it in easy contract. So when we went to run for the outcome, um, it appeared that they didn't make them, but it was because the up the out the out not up. So staff recommends that on both of those get full points. They did outcomes, um, and that's KCSL and Aging. so KCSL would then go up to have on here. Yeah, um, I think it was ninety-one. Okay. The uh, East Peak Council on Aging would get 89, which both are funding. Okay. And what are we doing that, so that won't happen next year? Yeah, we have, um, you know, it's a new process, and it's the first time that that happened. We did check everybody um, and made sure that no, nobody else was affected like that. But um, we know now what to do. Um, some of the agencies were doing it themselves, and so we kind mm. of thought that the agencies would take care of that. But since it wasn't clear, didn't give a straight direction on that. Straight direction. Kind of okay. We can do that this quarter. They just did report. Okay. So, are there any questions? So, oh. go ahead. Well, when we finished last time, there, the 89 threshold mm -hmm. and the total funding were were issues that would come out of the committee report. So we settled on 
um, I think it was a staff recommendation. I mean, the, the number that we came up with was very similar to the number from before, so we settled on a total of $399,000 and some change. So um, are we just going to go through all of these and see whether there are any changes and then consider? I mean, and it's just not an automatic because the score changed that we are going to recommend that additional funding from the council. Why not? I'm not saying I wouldn't support it, but it's not an automatic, is it? In this committee mm -hmm. or at the council, why wouldn't it be? It was our mistake as the city's mistake. Well, but the issue of the how much total funding we would be. No, the total funding, I know out. Nick's going to give us in a little bit, but we have to wait till everybody. He's here. He's here. <laughs> I, I just, I didn't want to leave an, imp an appropriate impression with anybody as we work through this process. So You're going to have to talk uh, into the podium or come up here and sit next to Councilmember Hiller so we can hear you. Mostly made our uh, our uh, putting together kind of the final pieces of the budget over the last week or so. So we would just need to go back and reevaluate and see where we find if that was the direction that we see. So just to clarify, you've been running with the budget at that $400,000 figure? Yes. So this would be a change that would have to be accommodated if this committee wanted to do it and if you could find it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. A couple things. Um, for what what um, ACSL and senior yeah. citizen were they um, part of the appeal process? They, one they, of the they both appealed. Yeah. Yes. Were they notified? What they were today. Okay, so they don't say anything, or they still want. To I don't know if they need to say anything. That was the only thing that they were appealing. Both of them. So I feel like we might have taken care of those two at this point, but we can ask mm. any here. That was the only thing. I don't see anybody, but I don't know who sent. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. there's no. Okay, so. Yeah, I'll give you a chance in a little bit. Okay. Um, my other thing is, uh, although I can appreciate your opening statements, I, I don't really want to tell anybody what to say with three minutes. So I feel like if they want to tell me, why this is important to their organization i would hope that i would i would like to hear that so although you said i don't want to hear that i would really like to because there might be something that um i, I just don't want to tell anybody how to, they got three minutes if that's what the time and how did we come up with the time limit did i said three minutes okay so that's nothing that we've voted on mm -hmm. okay I, I would like to see us come to some type of um agreements on that uh, Madam Chair, and also if that's how they want to spend their time talking about that, so be it. Um, that's that's just kind of how well, I feel. Well, and I was just saying it's not, that it doesn't have an impact. So if that's what you want to talk about, that's okay. And and I can agree with that. But if that's what they want to talk about, I would like to hear that. That you said so. That's okay. All right. And what else did you want to do? Well, I. I mean, I can understand putting a time limit on it. Did we ever have a time limit before? Was it three minutes, four minutes? Four minutes. Because three minutes is pretty, four minutes is pretty fast. Um, well, I figure we've already got their letters. We've already read them. Mm -hmm. I think three minutes is enough to add to that, what we already know. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we do four minutes. Okay, do I have a second? A second. All those in favor? Opposed? One opposed? Okay, four minutes. Can you change all that over there, ma'am? And, right, and, the, and then can I ask clarification for the audience on who do we have left that's appealing? We have, your, okay. we have CASO, Community Action, mm -hmm. 
Midland Care, T TDC, and the Y. You should have all those right there. I do. And who is TDC? Pika Daycare. Pika Daycare. So I can take out East of Pika Council? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first we'll hear from CASA. Is there a representative from CASA? Hello. Hello. How are you? Hot. Well, I'm not hot, hot here, but it's it is a little warm outside, isn't it? <laughs> I am here to appeal on behalf of Casa Shawnee County because of our scoring. Um, we have grown instrumentally overall in our scoring year over year. We rose from a 77 to an 85, which we are immensely proud of. But we do feel those four points that kept us from going over that threshold in terms of the grant monitoring over the last past year is a result of numerous transitions that took place with our executive director, our volunteer coordinator, as well as our office manager. With these changes, we're confident we've made numerous strides that we'll be able to continue to grow. And so we are respectfully asking for consideration that we increase that scoring. Okay, thank you. Would staff okay. like to add any information? Um, we could go through each of the categories where they've um, lost points, or is that, is that what you would like? I, don't, I mean, we can see it. Yeah. I um, guess she's yes. still got some of her four minutes, and I mm -hmm. thought that your invitation, maybe it was misunderstood a little bit, that we need you to tell us, if you would, where you think the scores are incorrect based on your performance sure. or your application. There's only one area of scoring which we decreased, and that was in the past grant administration. Overall, we've increased in almost every category, or we remain stagnant. Um, in terms of past grant administration, we were scored a five. Historically, we've been scored a 10. We do believe with the numerous changes that have taken place, we can get that score back from a 5 to a 10. I do want to give recognition that we have increased in outcomes from prior years. We've also increased from our organizational leadership as well. Because of those changes, we are confident that will impact our scoring for the administration moving forward. Any questions for me? So you're not disputing what the scores are? I'm only disputing one score, and that is the management for the past year. We were scored a five. I believe in all fairness that we should be increased to a score of a nine. Yes. I'm looking for the comments because, but I'm, I'm slow at this, so sorry. She done? Mm -hmm. So that had to do with the fact that you're First quarter reimbursement didn't have key information on it. The fourth quarter reimbursement had money left in it. Um, there were some expenses missed in the first quarter. I have a little hard time, maybe, at mm -hmm. Corey, but it had to do with actual submission of grants, grant invoices. Correct. Those should have been submitted in quarter one and quarter two. However, due to some staff changes in quarter one and quarter two, those were forgotten. We caught those in quarter four and did, then did submit those, docu those documents. So there were problems. There were problems, yes, and I will not deny that. However, we have made the necessary steps within the agency to ensure that does not happen moving forward. And you will see consistently moving forward and the fact we caught that error, that we were making the strides necessary to ensure we were staying within the constraints and the guidelines of the grant. And I just had that same question. So you had some staff changes and you weren't aware that somebody wasn't doing what they needed to do. Correct. I joined the Casa Shawnee County team in July of 2017. Unfortunately, these occurred prior to my coming on board. I did notice them when doing an audit in fourth quarter, and that's when we made the necessary changes to ensure they did not happen. 
moving forward. Thank you. Staff, do you have anything? No, nothing to add. Um, I just want to say this is one of those things. This is a process in a panel. This is what the <laughs> panel had scored you. If we override the panel, that would mean eight other agencies would also be able to override that. Mm -hmm. And we just can't do that. Um, so I, that's my opinion. Now, if you guys, you have any other questions? Ms. Heller, do you have anything else? Do you want to vote on this? I would like to hear everybody before we vote. No, we vote on each one. Vote on cost. No, I, I mean, are you saying we're going to hear it all and then we'll vote one no, at a we're, time? No, we're voting on one agency at a time. Because if we listen to them all, then we have to go back and start at the beginning of the vote. So do you have any more questions? I do not. I, I think it's really, these are really, really difficult. I've been in those yeah. shoes, yeah. as mm -hmm. most many of you know, for a long, long time. But if it... If we, if there's, if the score is wrong, then, then there's room to change it. But if the score is correct, mm -hmm. we're opening up right. the whole thing if we would change it. It's mm -hmm. not that we don't understand. No, no. And I understand, and I appreciate the opportunity to do the appeal. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. So are we ready to vote? Have a motion? There's no need. We need to well, vote on the appeal. proposing to make a change. Vote on the appeal? Yeah, no, I think, I think she's correct procedurally unless you want to override that, the appeal. that yeah. no original recommendation There's of no the vote. score that's on this sheet. I think I think she's correct, although I'm not sure, given that that being the process, if you guys shouldn't vote on upholding the, the uh, vote. I, this is if I may, this is what we were handed and why. Now they're appealing that decision, but this still stands. So if we're not going to change that, I think we don't need to vote. Yeah. And the two that, of course, the other two, yeah, we'll need to vote on that. And for whatever reason yeah. that reflects. So when we get, um, yeah. I think you've called for the vote. Okay. I would just like to say to Casa, this is near and dear to my heart, and um, it's kind of a tough lesson, lesson learned, you know. But um, this is tough. You got to try to have two people in there that know what's going on. Not that the two won't quit, but yeah. So it's tough. Okay, we're ready for community action. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Committee. My name is Terry Isles, first of all. I'm the um, uh, Chairman of the Board for First Day of Shawnee County of Community Action. Uh, also here is uh, Eric Bodecker. He's the Program Director for the community, or for First Day of Shawnee County. Before you, I went ahead and, and submitted our appeal, uh, and we are looking at it from, a, from an aspect of two different things. One, we believe the, the collaboration and partnership was the wrong number that was applied. I will admit we only listed four different entities. But if you look at those entities, such as the YMCA, there's three separate collaborations going on. If you look at the Boys and Girls Clubs, there's three separate collaborations and partnerships. If you look at the Community Resource Council and also Harvesters, that's two separate collaborations. So we're well over the sixth threshold that this particular number would have required, and we would ask that that number be changed. Um, I believe we only were allocated four, and therefore that would increase two more points. We also believe that uh, we were not correctly assigned the correct points with respect to the needs directly with the outcomes and the outputs. I went ahead and addressed this a bit further. I thought our application was very thorough on that. Um, I, think that I think the best thing to do is to understand that the first T of Shawnee County is not about golf. It's about teaching kids life skills, core values, honesty, integrity, uh, sportsmanship, respect, responsibility, courtesy, all those things, all nine of them, perseverance, judgment, confidence, those are the nine core values that we teach kids, not just golf. Golf is just a means of teaching this. 
I think you have to ask yourselves today, do you want core values on future communities, leaders of this community? That's one thing you need to ask. And if you answer that question in the yes, then you will answer your question that we are directly related to the outcomes and the outputs. With that, we would respectfully request the five points be added to it because of that, and that puts us over the 89 threshold. What I'm seeing, you've got all the points for outcomes and outputs. We only got 10 out of 15, I believe. It's 10 out of 10. It's on demonstrated need. Demonstrated, demonstrated needs. Demonstrated I'm sorry. Need. We were short on needs. Yes, the needs. Okay. So we need to look at what you said. Correct. So the needs. And I also noticed that you put in your request 30,000 and the max is 24. That's my understanding. Uh, that was what's on the application. I do understand it okay. is to 25. And this is, again, one of those I want to do over because now I know I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like when you're in school. I know that answer now. Um, that's, it, it's about, you know, you know, do you understand what I'm I saying? I completely understand. <laughs> it is so hard, but <laughs> you've got to have a line or you just keep moving the line. I, and I understand, but I hope that the committee also takes into consideration this is 25% of our budget. And if it's cut, we're cut. That's just across the board. There's no way of denying that. All right, do you have any questions? Well, I had not read the text yet, and we have that now, so I wanted to yes, look through the text on the need, because that's what they got scored down on. Thank you, ma'am. Um, do you have a um, I have a question for staff. So what he, when he's saying they can only apply for six different programs, is that right? Well, he's, because we talked about, or is it four? It's um, on the partnership, is that what you're referring to? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, what he was referring to, he said, um, is that, am I right? Yes. Okay. Collaboration the, partners. Yeah. Um, to get full points, it needed to be six um, entities, and he, they listed four. There were four listed, I will admit to that. But if you look at our collaboration with those entities, just for example, the Boys and Girls Clubs, they've got multi-different independent units and clubs, and we have independent collaborations with those, not just the Boys and Girls Club, not just with the YMCA. They, they were counted as one, but we have three each with them. And so that's why we think it should have been counted more than the six, even though four were only listed, I will admit that. But there are more entities intertwined in there that we are involved with. But if you only listed four, how are we going to know that there's more? Am I, am I seeing this right? I, I don't disagree with that. Because, because I've sat on the Community Action Board, and I know you guys have yeah. more than, than six. I, I, exactly. So if, 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 if the scores, if you only listed four, how is the scores supposed to know that you have more than that? I, I completely agree. I can only say that the reason four were listed was because we thought that was the threshold. And I can only be apologetic, but I have to go off of the information, with, which is what I got, that's in that application. But if you and also read the application, we also discuss that we have a collaboration with USD 501. Now, it's not in that particular category where it should be, but we also address that. That's 15 independent grade schools that we have a meaningful collaboration with, but they're not listed. I can sit here and name off some more that are not listed. Yes, so but, can I. So it was an error, error kind of on community action, huh? I'm not disagreeing with that. Okay, okay, but you're coming to the appeal process. Right. And okay. indicating that, you know, technically YMCA is three, uh, Boys and Girls Club, there are three that we have a collaboration with instead of just the one. So, staff, is that made, um, is that disclosed very clear to them? It, the score sheet is in the RFP. They have a look at the back. So, yes, it was listed. Okay. So, um, we're. I did read your appeal more than once, but I had not gotten into the text, and I, maybe I'm not telling you anything you didn't figure out, but the text in the need statement is all about just national data. It's not about our kids. And I, from what the comment, we do have access to the comments that they made. And, and I, I can understand that, um, ma'am, but if you also look at that, it talks about the 72% uh, USD 501 kids that are 
that are below the poverty level. It also talks about the kids in, in Shawnee County as well. And so while it does address on a national level, it does discuss these other kids that are part of the city of Topeka. The comment that we got forward from them was that they did not see that this, this specific need for mentorship program, that how, how that booked in. And I can and respect that. And, but I think you have to look at our, our program in this capacity. And it goes with this long saying or proverb, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You teach him to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. That's where we're at. We're feeding these kids for a lifetime to make lifetime decisions in a proper way. That's not mentoring. That's teaching. Thank you. Okay, do we have any motion? I have another question about the, I'm sorry, I'm just not as fast. <laughs> you talked about the, the partnerships. Do you actually have the, there were a number of them where you had, you named one, but there were three or five right. or whatever. Within those, do you go through one, one contact point with that entity, like the YM or whatever, and then they connect with the other three? Or do you have to spend the time with the direct separate relationships with each one? It's kind of both. We, we have gone through. Uh, the, the, the main one, like Boys and Girls Club and Don McWilliams. We have gone through her, but we've also gone through the three independent units to, to schedule and have the agreement with them because they operate independent of one another. Same thing with the Y and same thing with USD 501. We can't just schedule this with 501 or the Boys and Girls Club and Don McWilliams or the, the main Y. We have to schedule it and have the agreement with the individual units and clubs. Any other questions? I still need to decide what I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. What was your name, sir? Okay. That's a, well, I just want to make sure. Yeah. I am a volunteer. I'm a volunteer, too. I get 50 cents a day. <laughs> oh, we got a pay raise. I might get a dollar. Oh, wow. Uh, anything else from the committee? I can see going to the five points on the partnerships, but I don't think that solves the issue. With well, I don't think that means there's six more that we have to do the same thing. We'd have to, uh, and I, the, it's a panel process. The panel felt this way. Sure. It's, a, it's the same if we give one agency that opportunity, then we need to be fair. And if we do that, then we need to change the whole process. Because there won't be any point in having a process. Mm -hmm. Can you speak in the mic, sir? I don't disagree with that comment by no means at all. But I think you have to look at this on an individual basis to make a determination whether that committee scored it correctly based upon what was applied in that application. And if from your determinations, you determined that you don't think they did, I think you have the right to make that change. But they, you put down four, they determined there was four, that's it. Well, I, it's just like Ms. Ortiz said, how are they supposed to know there's more? I don't disagree with that either. <laughs> but I think Councilwoman Hiller is talking about the five with respect to the needs directly tied. That puts us over the threshold of 89. Well, and I am not one, I don't think I have ever gone over a panel and disagreed. I mean, that's a panel, that was their job, they were trained, they are experts, or I know a couple of them are experts in grants. I don't feel that was their direction, was to go off what you had put in the grant. I can't say, oh, you didn't do that, because they did do that. I understand. Anything else? 
Now, I, I will just say, I mean, we will, we will work on this process and talk in the fall. You know, one of the things for me was because they did get scores of full tens on their outputs and their outcomes. So just buying the needs, I just wanted to look at it. Fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to comment that, um, again, this is a, a process that's probably a costly process that um, you're probably going to have to look at next year to make sure that that, that does, not, does not happen. I know it's just a, a little tweak, but, you know, even when you're filling out grants, just that, that one word can change the whole meaning. Not that I'm, it's, it's really, really sad, but, you know, legally, it can change the whole, I'd say put more than, than you need. Don't, you know, if you have 20, put 20 and let them take it off or tell you to take it off, you know. Um, sorry. Okay, is there anyone here from East Topeka Council of Aging would like to speak? Okay, this is one of them that was appealed and was changed. Staff changed the recommendations. So, recommendation. so we do need to vote on it. Have a motion on it. Have a I second. I would like to make the motion to. Um, Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to um, overturn um, the East Topeka Senior Center funding. So where they were denied the score? Yes, yes, where they were denied that they are now approved. I, I, I guess due to staff's mm -hmm. error, is that correct? Well, due to... Um, score it's it's an error yeah Dude, okay. Take it. okay my preference at this point would be to um, to ex if I could offer a substitute motion to accept the change in scoring from the staff because I want to get all the way done and then we're going to look at how much money we're talking about and our comfort level in asking the city for more money or whether we'd want to go through and recalibrate everybody within the same amount of money but I certainly, if no, the staff has changed that's, their that's score. That's my motion. They, they put it in. I mean. Well, one of the things we talked about was that the 89% was not part of the original, was not part of the charge to the committee. It was, the, it was what the staff used to, to set them based on how the money fell. What? It, it did come, 89% came from the committee. We had other options, but 89% came from the committee. Yes, it did. Well, I double checked it with Sasha beforehand to see what had come through in the recommendations and what had been done the year before, mm -hmm. and that's the answer I got. It, it wasn't voted on, but it was the 89% came from the committee. They, su they, supported, they supported 89%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's staff, what they did last year, exactly. Staff made the recommendation right. to you all to set the threshold at 89% based on the funding directive that we got from Correct. the city manager and budget office. Correct. But I think what Corey's saying is that the committee supported that 89% threshold as a, a good threshold for funding. Right, but it was not part of the charge that came through officially to us. Correct. That recommendation right. came officially to you all for, from staff. Correct. That 89 be the threshold. Correct. So okay, have, so what's the motion? We have... This is a motion, motion to change the score and funding you based to... on staff recommendations. We have Ms. Hiller's proposal for a substitute motion. She's not comfortable with that. Right. So. Ms. Ortiz is, does not agree. So. You can second hers if you want. So do you second Ms. Ortiz's? I'm not ready to vote on the money until we've been through them all. I'm certainly, I am comfortable with changing their, with accepting the changed score at okay. this point. And what was her motion? Can you read that again? Councilmember Ortiz's motion was to change the score and the funding recommendations based on staff's recommendation to the committee today. Oh, with the, I think you guys are saying the same thing. No. Well, yeah, She's because... saying approve it, the, approve the, the project, score, but not the money. But not the funding level. 
But they've already. They, but, they, but that's the, be the funding level if you approve the score. Not necessarily, right? Why? It is for everybody else. Why would it change for those one people? For if those one if we all that the staff has put into the budget is four hundred thousand dollars. If we add money to the four hundred thousand that we did approve last time, we either are going to have to ask this council and the staff mm -hmm. for additional funding, more than we had last time, or if we decide not to, or they decide not to, then we, then if we stick with the threshold of 89, and we've got more that are over 89, we've got to go recalibrate the grant amounts within the total. But right now it's just East, or is it East Topeka, is that who we're on? So it's East so Topeka, East just them. We're not doing like everybody but so how the motion was to approve the funding as well mm -hmm. and to council member hiller's point just taking this spreadsheet on its mm -hmm. face so that would mean no one else was approved except them because it, I, i'm not sure how it affects the whole scheme of things if you approve the score and the dollars they'll then be that approved moves for you everything. up to 440. right and I think her point is that she's not comfortable that the, the committee's recommendation should be 440 based on the conversations that we've had up to this point. There's $400,000 plugged into the 2019 budget. Is that accurate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a little different. <clears throat> I'm not saying they wouldn't get funded. We just have to figure out how much money we're going to be asking the council for. For basing it on scores, you'd have to raise your threshold up to 90. And actually, 91, 90, at 90, if with 400,000 as our threshold, your low, low man on the totem pole there would be positive connections, and they would only be partially funded unless we change the formula. That's, I just want us to figure that out once we know who, what we want to fund, rather than do it more than once okay. in the process. So, <laughs> That's all. So if we can all agree that we'll accept the score and not the funding. Do you don't agree with that? I will second yours. Okay. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So the motion with the amendment passes. Okay. KCSL, anybody from KCSL here? Good afternoon. Gail Kozad with KCSL. I really, at this point, um, I appreciate the staff. Wanted to let you know thank you for uh, looking at our appeal and, and realizing that it really was, we did achieve uh, the output that we had intended to achieve. One thing I just want to say uh, about this process in general is I think my frustration with this has been that there's always been no new applicants. So if I get cut off this year or if anybody gets cut off this year, do they get to apply next year? If we're making it a competitive process, I want to make sure that that piece is clear. Um, and so um, I'm here to let you know I don't have any problems with the process or the way that things are scored. Um, just thank you for giving us the opportunity to continue to be involved in the conversation. That's You're it. welcome. Thank you. I'm done. Appreciate any it. questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, and just for those who are here since you've raised that issue, um, we have had people come back who, who were out a year and have come back in and, and been funded. Yeah. It's, it's agencies that have been funded within the past three years are considered not new. So you would be not new. Thank you. Just so everybody knows. <laughs> okay, is there a representative from Midland Care? Oh, we have to vote yes. on that one. Okay, do I have a motion? What? Cases. Cases oh, okay, sales. Okay. Move to accept the amended score. Do I have a second? I second. We all vote. All those in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Ms. Ortiz, anybody opposed? No, because I think we should be funded. Well, what, so you're opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Midland Care. Now anybody from Midland Care? Okay, there's no one here from Midland Care. Anyone from TDC Learning Center? Good afternoon. I'm David George, the Executive Director at TDC Learning Centers, and it was TDC back in the 60s and 70s, uh, but we do a lot more than daycare now, especially with our Parent Child Center at Highland Park. And uh, we feel that that's the epitome of uh, prevention and counseling, and yet uh, we got a 66 on that. Uh, for the uh, full day, we went from a 98 to a 76. So I'm not here to argue scoring because I'm not going to get a point or two, and I'm certainly not going to get enough to go above 89. Uh, one of the things I did notice, though, uh, is that the scoring sheet uh, that was released uh, back in February has errors on it, and I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't the same scoring sheet that you guys and the committee used uh, when actually doing this process because there's a, a huge error on this. Uh, both sides total 100 points, uh, but on page 8 where it says social services scoring sheet on, on the uh, outputs and outcomes, which many people suffered some uh, poor scores on, uh, the highest score that you can get on outputs is a 10, and yet it's worth 15 points. And so if somebody is given a 5 on that, they're automatically 10 points short. And that's certainly the empathy I have over many organizations that might be two points, three points, um, you know, five points short uh, is for that error. Now, it is made up on the outcomes because that starts at a 10 when really the maximum you should score in that category is a five. And so some committee uh, overlooked this perhaps and gave an organization a 10 when it was only worth five and it boosted their score to a much higher level than it should have been. So I may open a can of worms here, but if this is the case, and this is the scoring sheet that was used, I'm almost recommending a start over and a do over for those that are so short, because I'm not gonna get anywhere close to an 89. So that's the first thing I'd like to bring up, is okay. that the scoring sheet the is incorrect. Okay. And that in turn is gonna lead to wrong scores on outputs and outcomes both, which is gonna skew who's getting funded and who's not. Okay. You have, you have something else and then maybe staff can address. Um, and the other thing too is that I would, I would really like to see more scoring within that range because if you're going to have a cutoff of 89 or there's even talk of going to a 90 or a 91, then anybody taking a hit on this 1085 or, or a 530 uh, it just takes that one little margin to kind of bump them completely out, or one score and one category alone. You might be a perfect organization all the way across, and because of the scoring system within each bracket, one score and one category knocks them completely out, and yet you may have organizations that are funded that are getting slightly poor scores in three or four categories, and yet they're funded while others that are outperforming them in many areas are not. So those are the two things, is I believe the scoring sheet's incorrect, which is going to lead to uh, poor results, and that the scoring isn't fair if you're going to have a threshold of a certain point versus saying we're going to award a certain amount of money based on what people score. So for our organization to go from 16000 to nothing, we may have gone from 16000 to 4000 and then maybe with a poor score the following year go down to 1000 but we're not cut off completely. Mm -hmm. I know that's impacting many groups here, that are relying on this money, we're not. So we're fine uh, without the money. We would love the money to help us do better. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm fighting based on the scoring here for others. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. And Staff, I will, is there a... Uh, he's right. I mean, I, I had noticed that as I was trying to prepare for this process. This, oh, goodness. That the published one is different than what, what's actually... It is. I'm looking at the ones that the reviewers did, and, and the scores were correct on that. Yeah, I, th I think that yeah. they were, but I know what you're talking well, about. We I have, have one. <laughs> yeah, was it? Yeah, what was put out, and I guess in the print packet, and, when we, and, used, and we caught so that. So it was caught yeah. before they used them. Okay. And we had uh, discussed that about the funding. In fact, we discussed this for hours and hours about the funding, and we'll uh, discuss it again with this committee. So we'll take that into consideration. Thanks for that. 
Okay, next person, YWCA. I'm Kirsten with the YWCA um, um, in the girls in the run program, and we scored an 87 out of 89, and some of them were um, outputs and outcomes are vague. Um, with the changes, that's possible. We work with a lot of quantitative and qualitative data. The qualitative data, a lot of times, is hard to make a sound outcome and output statement. Um, so the, I understand the vague. The biggest one that um, we are appealing is the past grant recipient or the um, how we've done in past grants. Um, we're trying to do more, um, and the biggest area is the girls in middle school area. So we've overestimated what we could do, not realizing that once the grant was submitted, the next year we can alter those numbers to make them more look more realistic to what we can do. So when you're submitting a grant um, for next year, and I'm thinking I'm going to meet 80 girls, and then things come down, I can only put 40, not knowing that I can change those numbers, basing my information solely on what we applied for. Um, so a lot of those numbers, it's the middle school program during our summer that the outputs and outcomes weren't met. Um, and a part of it is we're trying to um, do more and not just do the status quo. We're trying to grow the program. Um, and not having privy to what the score was in the past, um, I don't know how those were necessarily came about, because that wasn't necessarily in the application. What, the scores like, for you in the for past? How, so one of the biggest ones is we got, we have been getting 20s on outputs and outcomes, and we got 15 on prior grants. Um, and the biggest, the only thing we've changed, and the only output or outcome we haven't met is our middle school summer girl program, and it's overestimating in our initial grant what we thought we could do, and then when that program actually came back, we scaled back, but did not realize that we could actually scale mm -hmm. back with the did, beginning of the year. Did you have someone go to the training? The very first one I did, my very first training um, when we first did it, yes. And when was that? Um, it would have been year, year, yeah. 2015? No, I wasn't working at the Y yet at 2015. The training I went to was um, 2017, if there was one. So I said, I've only been in this program for two years. The EC Impact Training, is that what you're talking about? A grant training, we had grant, a grant workshop. They were talking about it, coming into it. I haven't necessarily been to more of the workshops. I haven't been to a training for this okay. if it was 2015 because I wasn't working at the, my job yet. We didn't offer grant training in 2017 through this. Did, was there any questions? If people wanted to get training about outcomes and outputs, was there? Absolutely, we, we did refer people who asked for some assistance or help in that area to Sheena, our grant writer, and uh, several people did utilize Sheena for that assistance. Did, did you get, a, if I may, mm -hmm. did you get a copy of what, your, what the reviewers actually said on your score? We just got the scores. Okay, because they actually, if, if it's okay. Please, because my computer decided to reconfigure. Well, I brought mine. It was, it was a big deal for and me. And I know I you have the comments. Carry it so. around with me so I didn't leave it in the car. What the reviewer said was that there were four outputs and three were not met as projected. That there was projected that 80 would participate in, a, in the Mighty Girl that program. That would be the middle school. And only 24. That um, 90 adult and teen mentors would be trained. And there were only 76. 600 girls would participate in Girls on the Run 10-week program, and there were 569. And then there were 11, so that was your outputs. There were 11 outcomes, and only one of those was not met. So you did really well on that, and that was where, ratchet down and go back and catch the rest of this. Um, a 40% decrease in the amount of screen time as a family and was only your metric measured 30, 35.2, which is pretty yeah, close. Yeah, I guess <laughs> mine is not knowing, like, those were what we put in our grant to very begin with, and we didn't mm -hmm. change what we put in at the beginning of the year because 
that was what was submitted for the grant, not knowing that we can change if the projections are altered. Like we put in a firm middle school summer program thinking we're going to hit 80, and then as we're getting into it, realizing that if we're hitting 25, 40, that's wonderful. Um, I guess ours is I'm shooting for the stars and hoping it, but not realizing that I can scale those back once we actually get to the grant year is where I guess our where my outcomes and outputs aren't meeting because we're trying to increase our program and not just meet the status quo. Right, okay. I mean, the changes that we had with the other two were, they apparently knew that they could change them, just didn't get them in the system. Yes. When, when we issue contracts, we always give the agencies an opportunity to adjust their outputs and outcomes based on what funding amount they got because if they ask for you know fifty thousand and got twenty, they obviously will need to change their outputs and, and and potentially their outcomes. So when we issue contracts, it's it's a given that everybody is given the opportunity to adjust their outputs and outcomes. Okay, and, and everybody, almost everybody knew that. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Have any other comments? Ortiz, anything else? Yeah. Okay. So we are now to what you are concerned about, Ms. Heller. Would you like to discuss that? Tell us. So now we're ready to so decide we, what to take to council. Right. So the two that we did accept add roughly forty thousand dollars. Forty one nine? No. Yep. Right. Is um, that in this new one? Yes, it is. Okay. That's that for four forty two. Four forty. Before it was three ninety nine or something. Something. Four forty two. Four forty two seven three. Gotcha. All right. I'll make sure I have the right thing. Just I don't have a problem with that because when we talked about this last year, is Nick still here? <laughs> we took all these agencies, remember, and we maxed them out, and we said this is what we'd need if everybody maxed out their score, got a perfect score, and got perfect funding. That's the money we had went with. What was your recommendation? Right. So now we have the actual numbers. So I don't have a problem asking for the 440 at the 89. 89 is a B. They should get a B on a grant, <laughs> if not an A. But that would, that's my reasoning. That's one. You want to agree with that? I don't, I don't have a problem asking. I mean, okay. Do you have concerns? I just wanted to make sure we discussed that separate from the agencies because I think it is a separate issue and unfair to, to, to combine them. But if we're comfortable maintaining the 89 threshold and, and add, asking for another 40, um, I'm okay with that. Are you, are you, are you okay? Now, do we need to vote on that? What yes. we take to the yes. council? So, yes. yes, you need to vote okay. on so what's this the motion? updated spreadsheet with. We're taking updated scores and funding recommendations. It would probably be good if you, if you said the dollar amount. You want to make a motion? <laughs> you can do it. I know you can do it. Well, I move to adjust our recommendation to the council based on the updated spreadsheet from today. And that totals um, 398,344 for social services. 41,929 for emergency aid, total of 440,273. I second. All those in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Motion approved. Anything else before the committee? Now we will meet. The next time we meet is like August, September ish, right? Right. And then we discuss this all again. Discuss the process. Right process. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? 
Okay, seeing nothing further, we are adjourned. Thank you for coming.